A bail hearing is set for next week for an unemployed illegal immigrant from Morocco, accused of plotting to bomb the U.S. Capitol. Amin al Khalifi, who lives just outside Washington, D.C., was in federal court in Virginia yesterday. He was taken into custody in a Washington parking garage with what he thought was a bomb and an automatic weapon. But he had been under surveillance by the FBI for months, so both weapons were harmless. Joining us now with more details on the arrest is senior correspondent John Miller, who is a former assistant director of the FBI. Good morning, John. Good morning, Seth. First of all, what do we know about this suspect? You know, here is a guy who came here when he was 16 years old on a tourist visa with his parents to visit Orlando and, um, and just stayed and flew under the radar for years. A minor scrape here with a marijuana arrest, a couple of others, a suspended driver's license. But in 2010, he turns up in a meeting with an FBI source where they are talking about waging war against America. They're displaying weapons, talking about uh, bombs. And from there, he becomes a serious focus of the Bureau in a threat assessment role. What's his intent? What's his capability? Do we know if he has any links to al-Qaeda or any other terrorist organizations? You know, Seth, I think the reason the case went from 2010 into 2012 is they spent a great deal of time collecting intelligence to learn just that, outside connections, part of a wider network, other associates, but none of that came up. He seemed to be the so-called lone wolf, but bent on doing something himself. I watched your interview last night with Evening News anchor Scott Pelley. You said that you expected to see a lot of evidence in this case. Why is that? I think the FBI realized early on in these cases that when it's informants testifying and even undercover agents, that a, a big defense is mounted that the defendant would have never been able to do this on his own. This was driven by the investigation, and it, it becomes an entrapment defense. And they have found the more of this that's recorded and the more you see the role of the defendant as a driver from one of these cases to the next, uh, the more juries have rejected uh, that that, that defense. On that point, with a skeptical eye, if you look at this, you, you do think, how far would this guy have gotten? The, federal, the FBI helped provide the vest, helped provide the firearms. Could he have done this on his own without that kind of help? I think, I mean, nobody knows that question unless you don't engage in the case. And one of their tenets in these things is if the person's talking about doing it, that's intent. If they're seeking capability, if, we, if they don't find it through this investigation, they may find it through somebody else. So when you look at Umar Farouk Abdul Matalab, the underwear bomber, he was doing the same thing, seeking to link up with somebody. He found real people. They designed a bomb for him and put him on an airplane. The same with the Times Square truck bomber, Fajal Shazad, completely under the radar, but he connected with the right people and ended up in Times Square with a truck bomb. So the FBI's practice on this is, if we can find them before they find the real bad guys, let us replace that role in an undercover capacity. Interesting stuff. Thanks so much, John Miller, for joining us. Good to be here.